In August of 2008, China was famously hosting the Beijing Olympics when coverage stopped for a public service announcement. The nation's former chairman, Hua Guafeng, had died. Former Chinese leader Huang Guofeng has died. State media said he died from an unspecified illness on Wednesday at the age of 87. But after less than 30 seconds, coverage returned to the Olympics and that was that. And this is truly remarkable. The successor to Mao Zedong of all people had just died and it barely made national news. And so in today's video, we're going to be thinking about how. How on earth did Mao's successor who lived 32 years after the chairman end up being just a 30 second news story? This is the story of Hua Guafeng. Hello there. Okay, so if you are enjoying our Characters of Communist China series, make sure to let us know by leaving a like on this video. And for today's question, I want to ask you this. Who was the more influential figure in shaping modern China? Deng Xiaoping or Mao Zedong? And so when it came to the man caught between the two of them, Hua Guafeng, he was born in 1921 into a very poor family, even by the standards of the warlord era. And in his poverty, Hua was captivated by Mao's message that the peasants would bring about an agrarian communist revolution, and so he joined the Red Army at age 15. And after joining the Red Army, Hua saw action very quickly as he fought as a guerrilla soldier in the first Sino-Japanese War, and then again in the Chinese Civil War. Now, Hua was a very competent administrator, and he was promoted to be the party boss of Hunan, Mao's home province. If the president chose the governors, it kind of be like Trump making you the governor of New York. Basically, the leader's personal tick of approval. And so throughout the 1960s and 70s, Hua rose within the party, and as Hua rose, Mao's deputies lost their post. Firstly, Lu Xiaoqi was purged from the party, mostly for not overtly supporting the Cultural Revolution. And then secondly, Lin Biao was likely assassinated by Mao for having too much power as the head of the PLA. This then left an opening for Hua Guafeng to emerge as the lead candidate to succeed Mao. In 1973, he was made the Minister for Public Security, and then on his deathbed in 1976, Mao endorsed Hua Guafeng to take over from him. The biggest thing that Hua had going for him was that he was a compromised candidate. The radicals like Zhang Qing, see video here, had largely helped purge the Communist Party officials who favoured pragmatic policies such as small plots of private land. And for Mao, these officials were traitors of the revolution. However, the Cultural Revolution had done so much damage to China that most within the Communist Party were desperate for a leader who wasn't so devoted to Maoism that they'd actually carry on the Cultural Revolution. And so Hua was seen as a perfect candidate who could keep the pragmatists happy, but would also ensure that Mao's legacy wouldn't be trashed by allowing things like private land. Now, also for important context, just before Mao died, he recommended that the Politburo, the chairman's inner circle, strip Deng Xiaoping of all of his posts, though he was still allowed to retain party membership. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. To quote Mao, Deng's policies would have been dangerous pragmatic weeds that would have spread across the party. And so Deng was moved and was actually placed in security housing, but as Mao died, Deng surprisingly wrote in saying that he approved of Hua's appointment and was just happy to still be part of the party. But there were also other people who were keen for leadership of the party, mainly Zhang Qing and her gang of four. And whereas Deng moved in slowly to take the leadership, Zhang moved in quickly. She firstly tried to expel Deng out of the party entirely, and this failed. And then secondly, Wang Hongwen, Zhang's right-hand man, tried to gain power by demanding that all the provincial bosses report to his secretary. Now, this backfired when they asked Hua if that was the case, and Hua said that that was nonsense. And I don't want us to get lost in the weeds or into a beauty contest. I told you, I don't want you doing these things in here. You can use your own office or do it in the hall. Hua was also the main speaker at Mao's funeral, offering the eulogy for the great chairman. His speech was basically him trying to signal that he was going to continue on with Mao's work rather than trying to take China in a different direction. Nothing like Nikita Khrushchev's destalinization speech. His speech famously had the two whatevers when he said, whatever decision Mao made we fully support, and whatever Mao instructed, we unwaveringly follow. And he even took a jab at the dead Lu Xiaoqi for trying to hijack the Maoist movement. But the problem remained for Hua, what was he going to do with Zhang Qing? Yes, her initial play for power was unsuccessful, but her voice certainly wasn't one you'd want to have around. And so Defense Minister and Vice Chairman Marshal Yi came to Hua with plans for a coup. Now, Hua was reluctant about teaming up with the Marshal to get rid of Zhang because it created another rival for him to contend with, but he decided to go ahead with it. Zhang and her gang were arrested, to which Zhang protested, saying, The Chairman's body is barely cold and you have the gall to mount a coup. 
The Gang of Four were then airbrushed out of photos from Mao's funeral and the Cultural Revolution was officially over, less than one month on from Mao's death. The total cost? 34 billion US dollars. So the Gang of Four were ousted, and with Marshal Yi and Deng Xiaoping back in Hua's leadership, Hua had nothing to worry about, right? Well, not quite. Hua knew that Deng Xiaoping approving of his leadership was actually just pure lip service, and that he was really biding his time until he had the numbers to challenge Hua for the leadership. So Hua's approach was to relentlessly attack Deng. In his funeral address, he'd already associated Deng with Lu Xiaoqi and Lin Biao, and then Wang Dongjin, Hua's right-hand man, equated Deng with the Gang of Four and opposing Mao. And though Marshal Yi had helped Hua purge Zhongqing, he wanted Deng Xiaoping to come back because he was just extremely competent. And so as China entered 1977, Deng's supporters started to make noise. Firstly, they put up posters demanding the reversal of Mao's verdict to strip Deng of all posts, saying that whatever Mao wanted, Deng would defend. Then the vice president of the Communist Party, Hu Yabang, voiced his support for Deng, who himself had been sacked twice during the Cultural Revolution, and he understood Deng's struggle. Now, this wasn't enough support for Deng to yet have the numbers, but it was enough to prevent Hua from arresting or expelling him. Things got worse for the new chairman though. China's national newspaper, The People's Daily, then ran an article supporting Deng's idea that Maoism was a loose ideology that could really be reinterpreted to meet society's needs. As 1977 rolled on, Hua really needed a win, and that came in August as he was formally elected as the chairman of China's 11th Central Committee and chairman of the Central Military Commission. But even then, this win wasn't without its setbacks. At the third plenum of this new 11th Congress, Hua invited Chen Yun to speak, to which he raised six big issues. Four of them were different party officials purged by Mao during the Cultural Revolution, another was that Security Chief Kang Sheng made grave errors, and then finally, the last one was Mao's verdict which stripped Deng of all posts. Now, Chen Yun raising these issues when invited to speak was a pretty big slap in the face for Hua. Insult me, yeah? Let me show you that sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Just mm -hmm. throw some insults at me, just, you know, and, I, and I'll, I'll show you how to roll with the punches. Um, because lot don't seem to respect you. Why would they say that? They don't know me, they're not going to know that, and it's not true. Do something else. Deng himself then also spoke, and said that it was essential to not be so closely tied down to Maoist ideology. And then to make matters worse, the new Politburo appointments included plenty of Deng supporters such as Hu Yabang, Wang Zhen, and Chen Yun. Oh, and Deng Xiaoping was also back on the Politburo too. And so, with the Politburo now stacked with supporters of his direct rival, Hua had to stamp his own mark on the nation, and came up with a 10-year economic plan to move China into the 80s. Now, importantly, one of the main differences between Hua and Mao was that much like Deng, Hua recognised China's need to upgrade its technology, and he wanted huge investment in the sciences. Another interesting similarity between Deng and Hua was that again, unlike Mao, they both wanted investment from other nations and so extensively traded with Germany and Japan. Unfortunately for Hua, he spent too much too quickly and the productivity did not match the investment. The budget was in deficit, which in itself is no disaster, but when combined with high inflation, which for Hua was at 11%, it didn't bode well for him. In 1980, he was beginning to lose his grip on meetings and was forced to overturn the Tiananmen verdict, which allowed all those purged by Mao during the Cultural Revolution to return. This then sped up Hua's demise as those returned exiles were certainly not fond of Mao and therefore Hua, and rather they had a fair amount of sympathy for Deng Xiaoping. And so by 1981, it was clear that Deng rather than Hua was the leader. For foreign visits, Deng got to be the one who visited the USA, while Hua was instead given Britain. Later in the year, Hua resigned as chairman of the party and he was quietly demoted. Hu Yabang replaced him as chairman, Zhao Ziyang became the new premier, and Deng Xiaoping became the new head of the military commission. Although technically it was Hu in charge, he himself conceded that it was Deng running the show. As for Hua, he was part of the party until 2002, but didn't really do anything. We don't know why he left, some reports say he voluntarily retired for health reasons, but this hasn't been confirmed. As we said at the start, in 2008, he died. And the strange thing is that at the time of his death, this former chairman of the largest country in the world was just some guy who liked to cultivate grapes and then received 30 seconds of news coverage upon his death. Thanks for watching. If you did like that video, don't forget to leave a like to let YouTube know that this is Hua Fan content worth watching. And subscribe so that you don't miss any more episodes of Characters of Communist China. We can't wait to see you next time for our next venture into a fascinating part of history.